Hello, everyone. Our guest is an amazing woman, an internationally recognized actress who has starred in over 40 television movies, five miniseries, and 12 motion pictures. She is a producer and an author. You will meet our Emmy-winning bionic woman in a few seconds and learn about the impact that she is having around the world with her Quiet the Mind and Open the Heart experimental workshop and retreats. Lindsay Wagner certainly qualifies. Here she is with one of her very famous co-stars, Anthony Hopkins. I think I am still, as they say. Well, it stands to reason they say that uh, danger doubles the effect of alcohol. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, you do now. Oh. Well, it's also been said that whenever a man and woman are alone together, that there are sexual implications. Really? Never heard that before. Well, now you have. It depends on the man and the woman, I suppose. It definitely depends on the man and the woman. And now to meet Lindsay Wagner. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. You know, um, you are such an accomplished actress, but you're more than that. I mean, you are a caring individual. The roles that you played after Bionic Woman all have had special meaning. Uh, you are the honorary chair of the International Agency Council on Child Abuse and Neglect. Um, you're interested in animal welfare, domestic violence, environment, and uh, the advancement of human potential, which is really what you're working on now. You know, you corrected me. It isn't experimental workshops. It's experiential. Experiential, <laughs> yeah. which means which means that I'm not you, when you come to the workshops. Yeah. That you actually get into experiencing the kind of shifts that I'm talking about because of the techniques we use, rather than uh, just hearing me talk about something. You take the information home and go home and and just try and figure out how do I apply this to my life. Uh -huh. It's very experiential, and I, I teach certain things. We talk about um, we talk about the concept that our experience of any life circumstance is a function of our perspective of that circumstance or our perspective of that person is what gives us our experience of them or that moment true. rather than thinking that with you came the way I felt about you it actually came with me yeah encountering you that's very interesting uh, the programming yeah. already there so when people say well even intellectually I could understand that kind of but you know you can't mean under this kind of a circumstance anybody would feel this under this kind of circumstance and then you know we look at different circumstances where in fact other people have had a different response to that same kind of thing than you would have uh -huh. or than I would have and so therefore it just kind of keeps proving the case what do you do about shifting your perspective how do you get a handle on what creates that perspective it's so is in fact what we work on in the workshop and shift it and you can feel it. That's why I call it experiential yeah, workshop. It's so interesting uh, and I want to find out how you got involved in all of this. But your caring has always been in your career. One of the films, one of your films is Shattered Dreams which you co-produced. And if we could look at a scene from Shattered Dreams which has to do with domestic abuse. <laughs> domestic violence. Now you even have worked with the sheriff's department. How did that come about? Well, all of the years that I've worked on my own self, yeah. on my own healing, our family early on struggled with that issue and, and oh, so it's something that I know very well from the inside out. Ah. And uh, you know, growing up with something like that, for everybody involved, there's healing to be done. And uh, I, having this great faith in human potential, always believe that we can heal from anything, really. I'm kind of Pollyanna when it comes to that, at least a certain amount, if not a whole bunch. Well, how did you And so I've done it myself. Yeah. And as I learned what was most effective for me, I started then sharing that with other people and studying these things because I, I, at one point I wanted to be a psychologist and I was but I was dyslexic and I couldn't get through college they didn't know how to help us when we were young at that time today it's like a no-brainer oh well that's the no problem here we'll just do this yeah. but back then they didn't even understand it so um, so I studied myself taught myself and I began sharing with when I when a friend of mine uh, from ICANN which was the interagency council of, of child abuse and neglect, when she started a program for domestic violence offenders in the jail, uh, men who were, who were incarcerated who had the option to take a recovery course uh, called Bridges to Recovery, 
um, I was visiting that class and I thought, wow, I've learned some techniques that would really be helpful. So as I started sharing it with the teachers there and working with them a little bit, I kind of got sucked into the whole process and I spent several years there and then started a, um, a program co-facilitating with James Beard, the man who was one of the primary teachers in that class in the jail. We, we set up a, a um, a program where when the men would come out of jail to help the families reunite and, and learn a common way of seeing what's going on and learn uh, new ways of relating to themselves and each other. And do they really, can they be cured of yeah, that? Really? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And one of my passions is to, you know, at some point do another film to uh, kind of change the public's opinion mm -hmm. that that's a hopeless case. because. I believe that when we as a people embrace something, we used to think that women like it, right? I mean, think back, back yeah. in the 50s and the 60s, and the, the yeah. common thought was, well, she must like it, why would she stay? Absolute, right. totally yeah. ignorance. Yeah. But, um, and, and so it is with most men. They don't want to be like that, and people don't believe it. There's no That's help hard. for them because yeah. they get demonized and disenfranchised instead of helped. We are, I'm going to jump from this, which is so interesting, to another subject, and that's terrorism, mm. which intrigued you. And there is a scene from a marvelous, marvelous film that uh, I'd like to look at that has to do with that. It is uh, Flight 847, the taking of Flight 847. Israeli. Israelis. There, there, there are none. Look! There are American and Canadian and, um, and, and Greek and Tunisian, but there are, are no Israeli. Well, I, I can't. The, um, American passports, they, they don't indicate religion. You see, there, there's no indicate. Names, German names, Jewish names. I, I can't do that. Jewish. I can't. Jewish passports. I'm German. Don't you understand? I, I, I can't do that. You can't expect me to, to select Jews for... I can't do that. Terrorism is such a contrast to what you are doing all over the world, and that is your instruction, if I can call it that, on living together and opening the mind and the heart. You have a wonderful CD that uh, really is captivating of how to meditate with the music. I mean, just, is this your life now, or do you think you might do more acting? You just uh, said you'd like to do another film yeah. to do with the domestic violence. Yeah. Um, it's what I'm doing mostly now, it's what I've done mostly of late, mm -hmm. and it's not, I haven't made any decision that I've quit acting, it's not like that. It's just yeah. my focus kind of shift and I've found myself doing this so I feel I'm in the right place at the right. Well, I th what, what is so wonderful is you are using your celebrity to do a lot of good. Yeah, and I had a lot of people help me in my life and mm -hmm. I had some amazing techniques and, and conceptual shifting that people helped me with, that helped me heal myself and grow and and I just so in my workshops I offer the things that I have studied but also I studied them because they were so effective for me. Yeah. We're we're going to take a break and then and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit but then we're going to turn it over to our audience of uh, people who want to be directors and actors and so on. So, let's take a break and we'll return. And now our audience is going to have their turn, but I still want to ask you thing about your studying, uh, your book. You have two books out, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. What are they? Well, one, one is a vegetarian cookbook. Yeah. Um, having been a vegetarian for almost my whole adult life, mm -hmm. um, people, especially when I had my children, who are now in their mid and late 20s, <clears throat> people would always say, well, how do you do it? I mean, how do you, what do you do? What do you feed your... And they asked me so much, of course, being so visible, yeah. right? People want to know how I do it. And 
um, I just said, I should need to write a book. And so I co-authored with a good friend of mine who was also yeah. vegetarian. And because you just kind of do it, you do it from the hip. You know, we yeah. grow up doing that from the time I was 18. I, you know. And then you have it. I and then I have an acupressure uh, facelift. Book. That is fascinating. Yeah. I'm going to get to that another time because we're going to come back. We're going to continue this after this show. See, we're going to have two shows. Okay. Let's see. We have some students. Larry, you are from COD. Yes, hi, how you doing, Ms. Wagner? Uh, my name is Larry Nelson. I'm a theater student at College of the Desert, and I have aspirations to be a director, uh, theater and film. My question for you is, uh, as an actress and also as a producer, what is the most important uh, quality you look for in a director? That I look for? Yes. Oh. Well, I must say that the directors that I have worked with, that I have enjoyed working with the most and who, with whom I feel I was able to summon my best performances mm. were directors who had acted, maybe not even successfully, but had acted first. Mm. I think it's really important for you to understand what the actor is going through and what it takes to make an actor feel safe, if you will. Mm. Um, enough to and create a safe space, almost parental in a way. Now it doesn't mean giving in to everything, it just means that there's a strength and a power to me in somebody who knows what the actor's going through and can create uh, you know, an atmosphere where the, uh, the actor can do their best and feels that support from the director. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Alicia. <coughs> and Alicia, you are also a College of the Desert student. Yes, I am and I'm also an aspiring actress and I was wondering what that your best advice for a young actress would be? Well, um, <laughs> that's a big subject. <laughs> um, I think to find honesty mm -hmm. is the greatest challenge. And that when you're working with a character, find yourself as deeply as you can in that in those words in that story in that circumstance mm -hmm. your emotional honesty as even you let's say you even if you're playing somebody who's killing somebody I can't believe that you've never thought I sure would like to kill that person right so somewhere in there is that you know the potential to summon that but then start building your character if that person's not like you much their personality let's say then start building the personality on top of that but find the honesty for yourself first. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know how much time we have left. Do we have time for Jeremy? Huh? Maybe we'll, yeah, because we've got, well, I, you know what? We are going to, so viewers, you be with us next week. We are continuing with Lindsay Wagner next week, and we have other students who will be asking her questions, just like Alicia and Larry did, and they're not going away, they're here, and we're going to tape it, and then you, we will share it with you. But I, you know, we're almost out of time, but I just want to thank you so much for being here. And I know that I've just got so many questions that I want to ask you. So I'm really glad that you have agreed to do that. Um, but I, you know, you also were in the East. I mean, a lot of your thinking has to do with the Eastern thinking, as well as versus the Western thinking. And Not I wondered, versus, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I know. together with. I know. Together Is that better? With, exactly. How did yeah. that come about? Oh gosh, I you know when I was a, a very young woman in my night, late teens. Um, I <clears throat> met some very exceptional people. Uh, they were, as a matter of fact, you have a church here in the valley, uh, the, what do they call it now, the Center for Spiritual Living. That was Religious Science, is that, that was, the one? Yeah. No, no, yeah. Uh, yes, Church of Religious Science, yeah. 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 Um, and Dr. William Hornaday, who was the one who co-founded the, the church with Ernest Holmes, was one of my mentors. And their methodology of healing something helped me to uh, not have to have surgery on an illness that I was going through. And that opened my eyes and said, oh my goodness. And some of that thinking is, because it is Christian based, it is, you know, it's, it's, it's not a non-Christian religion. But they have added some understandings that are very inherent to the Eastern philosophy. So that was my orientation in a very young age. And I continued to study both East mm -hmm. and West from that point Now, on. and you're going to Italy. 
uh, to do <coughs> your, my workshops. your yeah. workshop. And I noticed on the website it says English and then says Italian. Do you speak Italian? No. We're going to have a translator. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is this the first one you've done in Europe or you have been in Europe Oh, no. I did, I did three and a half months last year in four and a half months in, in Europe last year. England, Ireland, mostly yeah. in England last year. And then I'll be doing a few in England and now it Italy this year. How many people come to these workshops? It depends on the format we're doing. Um, there's some formats where it can be any number of people and there's other formats that are more intimate and more mm -hmm. intensive. And we try to keep it between 25 and 40. Mm -hmm. So. And I know you have three day ones. And, yeah, I have and one in Ontario actually coming up. Oh, really? In the first weekend of June. Oh, great. Uh, at the Ayers Hotel down in Ontario. And so if people. And that's the two day workshop. And if people are watching, they can call. Your, Absolutely. your website Please, is going to join us. We'd love yeah, that. Right. Okay. I know, Soraya, you are just, you're a fan. <laughs> Lindsay's and you will have a question. <coughs> My name is Soraya and I'm an actress. What I'd like to know is what is your greatest strength that has made you a successful actress and how are you using that strength in your work as an advocate for human potential? That's an essay question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my, what I consider to be is kind of a, a jump off of the original question about acting and that is to find your own truth. I look for pieces that mean something to me in respect to my own personal evolution. And what I feel uh, would be helpful in some way to the people who watch it. I always look for things that I find, except for sometimes something's just fun, you know. But short of that, I look for the pieces that, um, that have something that I feel is maybe transcending, if I may be so bold as to use that word, or as opposed to just surviving something. You know, when, I do, when you do drama, you get a lot of survival stuff. You know, and to me, I'm interested in thriving. And so I look for stories about women, and most of the things I've done are true stories. I look for stories that have an arc where the woman actually grew into, didn't just survive it, but grew into something. And that's what I expect of myself as a human being, and that's what I offer in the ways that I've found it to work for me in my life. That's what I offer in my workshops to other people, because this worked for me. It helped me really get out of that consciousness and into this one, and that made my life better, and it made me a nicer person. Thank I, you very much. I, thank you. I, I, I am just so <laughs> pleased that, that all of these younger people are here, and I, I know Soraya is out of school, but the others are at College of the Desert, and they all want careers in the theater or films. Did you do theater at all? I mean, you, you were just all films and television? Pretty much. I did, yeah. I did a little bit of theater when I was young, but not really even professional theater. All right, now I have a question for you. In, with your answer to Soraya in looking for the, the truth in the role that you play, how, were you, how did you use that with the bionic woman? I mean, here is something that is so extraordinary and not really a true situation. I don't think. Well, actually, I didn't take it as such. I took it as a very real circumstance. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and in fact, we did a lot of very cutting edge and unusual stories. If you look at the series itself, and which, by the way, it, they've finally gotten their rights issues worked out and they're going to be releasing it again this summer Great. on DVD. So we're going to be able to look at it again. But we worked very hard to make it not just be, uh, you know, a, an action show with a tough guy in a skirt. We really worked hard to put in conflict resolution as ideas, to put in human uh, qualities even to the so-called bad guy because we, honestly, I love my country, I love my culture, but there's sometimes real short-sightedness in, in the thinking if you're not on our side that there's something just completely wrong with you. I mean, you're just yeah. completely wrong, you know, <laughs> as opposed to you have your agenda and we have ours. Let's see what we can do to understand that about each other. We're pretty quick, as and I think you. I think it's a human problem. You know, we're pretty quick to just draw that line and say, if you're not on this side, you're right, and on this side, mm -hmm. you're wrong. So we did stories, even in the Bionic Woman, where we explored that, showed certain personal motivation 
Uh, and this is something that I push for constantly in the stories. And it made it hard. And they listened to you. Well, they and did. And as I had a fairly new actress when you started. But that was it's part of my contract. That they did. Uh -huh. I, I asked for that in the very beginning or I wouldn't have done it. Because I really didn't just want to do another show and have yet another show that, that held that old kind of consciousness, black and white, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't, I didn't want to do that show. And so when I made the agreement to do it, I said, as long as I can have some creative control and you can understand, do you like what I'm saying? Because this is what I'd like to do with it. And it was tough. And they worked hard trying to get out of that old mold yeah. when we had an edict to do so many bionics within a certain period of time in this, this many bionics we had to do in one each, each show. So how are you going to do that if you're not going around bashing people? And so that's where the humor came from. So I said, well, let's, you know, we can make it funny. And Ken Johnson was very creative and all the writers we had. So we worked really hard to make it unique. When you started, did you ever think that show would be as successful as it was? I mean, when you were first cast? Um, no, I don't, I don't think any of us had any idea it was going to become iconic. It certainly, what well, had some, there were some clues in that it was literally demanded by the public. It wasn't something that we started out to do ever. It was just a visit on a, on Lee's show, on the Six Million Dollar Man. And then, <clears throat> and then they killed her off because it was an easy way to get her out of there, you know. <laughs> Traumatized all the children in the United States. <laughs> and the letters were just horrible, you know, coming in saying, you just completely freaked out my child. There were letters literally from Children's Hospital saying what <gasps> irresponsible programming you did. Oh, no, I you know? had no idea. So they brought me back to life. <laughs> so I was like, well, I've got to bring her back to life. And, uh, and then... Then they just said, okay, now we're going to turn down your bionics to the public. She's safe. She's good. And she's going to go teach school, so everything's fine. And then uh, the, the response was so huge. They said, well, we're going to have to make this a series. Well, and, and it went all over the world. I mean, yeah. that oh, really yeah, established yeah. you as an internationally yeah. famous star. Yeah, kind of me and Coca-Cola was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you did those Ford commercials. Yeah. The yeah. log type. Yeah. And we were going to do that. And I thought, no, 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 I'd rather see on the screen your acting. But... But you were wonderful selling Fords. Yeah. They could use you again, although they're doing very well now. Yeah. We had a lot of fun making those. Oh, it was great. like making little movies as we go yeah, along. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, again, I'm going to thank you so much for being here.